was a lot of uh, speculation, isn't there, in the last week that that maybe this lull we had about 11 days, it was a real lull, and some days no migrant crossings at all over the channel, that if this was the Rwanda policy, even though it's not even law. It was already working by acting as a deterrent. But if you arrive in the UK, the law, even when it comes to divorce, will be backdated the 1st of January. You'll just be shipped off to Rwanda and you won't ever set foot on British soil again. Um, that's quite clearly, actually, it wasn't that. It was the weather conditions, wasn't it, that made the difference? It turns out it was the weather. And, um, in fact, the Rwanda policy at the moment, it's not in and it's not acting as a deterrent, as perhaps a lot of people thought it would. And that, to some, might be a surprise. But I'm sure, as we've spoken over the years, it's not a great surprise to us that this perhaps won't um, get rid of all the migrant crossings, I won't stop it. It might act as a deterrent. We'll have to see. The proof's going to be in the pudding, as they say. But, but, it, however, but it will only act as a deterrent when it is publicised. And we know, you know, these uh, migrants often have got their smartphones, they're up to date on what's going on, they're getting information from people that are being fed back to them. That you'd actually need to see people being put onto those flights and sent to Rwanda. But um, the reality is, you know, they're not going to... The average person in this country is probably not aware of the Rwanda policy, people who don't pay that much attention to the news, and that is millions of people. I'd be, I'd be amazed if actually your average migrant sitting on the shores of uh, Fr northern France is, is aware of the latest machinations of second readings and whatever in the UK Parliament on these things. Also, the capacity, I think, Julia. We only have capacity for 500 at the moment. Yeah. So what are we going to do, according to last figures, with the other 28,500? The gangs smuggling will take those odds. They will take the risk of 500 being sent to Rwanda and the rest of the 28,000 going through. So this isn't a stopgap. It's almost like a bluff. We're going to try and call a bluff on the people yeah. smugglers, and they're going to call ours. What is going to happen to 28,000? We don't have the capacity. We don't have the money to pay for this. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We know it is costing, you know, what was it, £1.4 billion pounds a year? Is it £45,000 a year being spent on this accommodation and processing for each individual migrant? Um, the key thing is also, you say, you know, 500 is, is the only number of people that the Rwandans are actually contracted to to uh, keep. Now, the idea, of course, to process, the idea was, was I think, from Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, is that, well, you know, you wouldn't actually have 28,000 people but A, you're not going to be sending everyone. Uh, it's only going to be uh, you know, men, uh, able-bodied men, and, and realistically, it's only going to be a tiny number of those. I think one figure suggests it would only be 2% of those crossing. But if the whole point was there would just be enough that it would be publicised um, and the fact that people would be deterred. It does appear, from what some people are reporting from the channel, is that actually migrants are being told, you need to come over now because when this law comes into force, you've got a chance of being sent to Rwanda. So come over now before they, they enforce this and you can get into the system now. Um, it may well be that this is actually uh, you know, a selling point for the traffickers right now. Well, the selling point is going to be um, knowing that they can't be sent back as a family. So surely you just... Yeah. Um, say right okay we'll send someone over with a, a a woman or maybe a child as well and you know there you are you're a family unit you're now partners you can't be sent back yep. and then what, what are we going to do about that we won't be able to stop them or send them over to rwanda and we're going to risk more lives because people are going to be traveling with women and children so yep. instead of um the, the a lot of the males that we see so the gangs are always uh one, well, 20 steps ahead, and, we know that. And this is the thing, this is where motivation comes into it, doesn't it? It's the actually, you know, the, we are talking about billions of pounds worth of, uh, of business here. In, you know, people trafficking is a very, very lucrative uh, criminal uh, enterprise right now. And then you've got people, you know, um, patrolling uh, and people trying to make policy where it's not a, you know, a life or death or a money-making exercise. And of course, you know, when you've got people who they claim to be desperate. I don't see why you're desperate when you're in France to get to the UK. You're not still in Syria. But people desperate, apparently, to get to the UK. And you've got a lot of people desperate to make a lot of money out of them. They're always going to find a way. I think people need to remember there's more money made in people smuggling than there is in drug smuggling. Yeah. And therefore, these guys find it very lucrative. The kingpins were sitting abroad. We have to catch um, these gangs and there's nothing so far in relation to catching gangs we're talking about deterring migrants and hoping that the demand 
will increase. But until the supply is there, yeah. the demand is always going to be there. We have to cut off the supply. And that's where the money needs to be invested into getting these gangs, locking them up, stop them patrolling but, but the schools. But they'll the just approach. be replaced by the next gang because for this money to be made, they'll be replaced by the next gang. That's the trouble. Um, Hajib Singh Bangal, a UK immigration lawyer, thank you very much. Um, we've had yet again uh, 254 migrants who have crossed uh, so, um, in just the last uh, day. Uh, 550 migrants crossing the channel over the bank holiday weekend. That means we've now seen 7,000 crossing the channel since the start of this year. That is three times what we saw this time last year. Um, clearly, the government's migrant policy and the future one of Rwanda isn't working, certainly not yet. Is the government doing enough to tackle this issue? Yeah, yeah the government's doing a huge amount, to be fair to them, to tackle this. And uh, half of the problem is on the French coast here, where uh, France seems to, too often just to turn a blind eye to the idea that these characters are um, moving along the beaches uh, in that corner of France and uh, being able to launch these very, very dodgy inflatable boats. For those that criticise the Rwanda thing, and I'm not with them, because my view is here that the government has to be able to show that taking those risks, and many have died, but taking those risks with children isn't worth it because you won't end up here in any guaranteed state. Well, no, 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 no. If you, if you take that vote with children or you're a woman, you're not going to be sent to Rwanda. <coughs> It's well, only going to be young men who are going to send to Rwanda because well, we know the, the outcry majority, of anything else is no, done. No, the vast majority of people that are organising it and are on board those boats are young men. Yeah. They are not women and children, but they do risk women and children because many of them join them on those boats. And so the reality is that uh, whatever else one thinks about this, uh, this idea of Rwanda has to get going quickly. And the government, if it wants to start using a deterrence like that, needs to be able to say, here it goes, you will be back further away than you were when you launched that boat. And that's the key bit. Deterrence works once they see it happening, not before. Uh, 